Okay, so in today's tutorial, I'm gonna talk about how to do an applied pocket. This is a pocket that is essentially like a patch pocket or a second piece of fabric that's applied to the knitted item. Um, but rather than a traditional patch pocket where you, you knit something that looks like this, a square, and, and sew it onto your finished sweater or your sweater piece, this one you're actually gonna pick up the stitches and knit the pocket onto the, fa the fabric. Um, so why would you want to do that, you say? <laughs> Um, it's tidy. It's very tidy. I have trouble getting patch pockets to look neat. Um, it may just be me, but I know that it's not. There are other people who have the same problem. Um, so to me, it gives a very nice finished look. Um, other, way, other reasons you might want to do it, um, it is very easy to check the positioning of the pocket and the size. And by that, what I mean is you can actually just try your sweater on and put pins, like where you, or like locking st stitch markers, where you want the pocket to be, and then knit it to the size you want it, rather than trying to figure out like, okay, is this pocket gonna be too shallow? Is it gonna be too neat? Is it gonna be too deep? You can really visually see where it's going to be on the fabric, on the finished garment. And so that's another reason I think it is a good way to do pockets. So what are some of the negative things about this? To me, really the only negative is that you will be manipulating an entire sweater's worth of fabric. Today, we're obviously just using a swatch um, just for ease of demonstration purposes. Um, but usually when you're doing this, you're typically doing it on a finished sweater. You can just do it on a front piece of a cardigan or what have you, but usually what I do is knit the sweater and then apply the pockets. Um, so you are manipulating a lot more fabric, which can be a little bit obnoxious, but to me, it's you still have to do that when you're seaming. And this feels, for my personal knitting style, feels a little bit more natural to me. Because uh, you're already used to that with you know doing sleeves and collars and things like that. So it doesn't seem like a huge deal to me, but it may be a deciding factor for other folks. So when you're doing this, what you need is one needle, preferably circular, preferably shorter, because you don't want to have a ton of a cord hanging out, um, in the same size as your fabric. So this is worsted weight yarn. I knit it with US 5. I'm a notoriously loose knitter, um, but if that's why this needle looks small to you, that may be why. Um, you'll need that, and then for this demonstration, I'm going to be using double points to pick up the sides of the pockets. Um, when I'm actually knitting this in real life, I usually just use other circular needles um, they do not need to be in the same size as this, the fabric that you're using. So for example, if this is a five, I can use a four, a three, a two, or a one. You don't want to go, you typically don't want to go larger um, just because you don't want to stretch out your fabric. But you, one size larger would be fine, I think, if that's all you had. But usually you just want some a little bit smaller or the same size. It's up to you. I find that smaller works easier to pick up and it doesn't affect the gauge at all. So. Um, usually what I do though is just use two other circular needles along the sides because what we're going to be doing is picking up the bottom of the pocket and picking up the sides and knitting the pocket back and forth, attaching it to the side um, at the end of each row essentially. So let's just go ahead and start this. Um, of course what you would normally do is figure out how big you want your, pro your pocket to be, figure out where you want to start it. You want to start picking up stitches in the bottom right hand corner of your pocket. So for example, if this is going to be my pocket, I want to start picking up stitches here for the bottom and then I'll pick up stitches for the sides this way. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and start picking up the stitches for the pocket. What we will do is pick up along the bottom and then we'll do this, the vertical sides. So. Um, yeah, let's do that. So normally you would have it marked out for, of course, I'm just going to start randomly here. Um, and so you can either do the, if you want to knit the pattern, the pocket as is directed, then of course you just need to know how many stitches you need to pick up and how many, what you're going to be doing is picking up every other vertical row. So if, for example, your pocket is 30 rows tall, you'll be picking up 15 stitches vertically. So you just want to go ahead and pick up stitches along the bottom. So it's just like picking up for an afterthought heel. We don't often pick up in the middle of our knitting, so 
if you've not done an afterthought heel, it might feel a little awkward. Uh, but basically what you're doing is just going through and picking up the right hand loop of each stitch. And so what I'll do now is go ahead and show you that very close up. So basically what you're doing if your stitch is a V, you're just picking up the right hand side of that V. Just, oops. Just catching that loop or that strand as the case may be. And you'll just do that for the whole um, horizontal distance of the pocket. Okay, so then um, to pick up the vertical stitches, what I typically do is just look at this first stitch I picked up and I'm just gonna start between that column and the next. And I'm gonna be just working in between these I'll try to stretch it to show you. Of course you have your bars there, right? Like you're used to seeing those bars. And what you're gonna do is just pick up every other one. So what I kind of do is just kind of adapt like a sewing technique almost, where you're like, almost like you're just stitching along. So you just go up and over or weaving, whatever you wanna do, but up and over so that you just miss every other bar. Now, you technically do not actually have to do this. You can just pick those up as you go, but for me, that's a little bit, I don't know, when I get ready to knit, I just wanna be able to knit and not have to look at something very closely, so I prefer to pick them up ahead of time. So you're just gonna do that for however tall you want your pocket to be, or for however many rows that's indicated in the pattern. Again, you're picking up every other row, so if the pattern is 30 rows, you're gonna be picking up 15 stitches. And then you just do the same thing on the other side of the pocket. So when you're picking up this side of the pocket, um, you will notice that, of course, because you're picking up the right side of the loops, you'll just go to the, you know, go to the left of that loop and you'll start picking up between those two columns. Um, I apologize, I didn't say it over here, uh, but typically what you want to do is kind of skip the first bar, unless you have a very, like unless you're, I would say if your gauge is any um, greater or less than, if, you're great, if your stitches are larger than <laughs> worsted weight, so if you're getting into errands or bulkies, you may want to pick up this very first bar. Um, but typically I kind of skip that first bar because I'm gonna be knitting a stitch on top of this and then joining it. So typically what I do is skip the first bar and then start alternating. So again, I'm just picking up every other row. And I apologize, I'm not quite as efficient at doing that because of the angle that I'm working with for the camera. Um, another great thing about this method with using the three needles to pick up for your pocket to me is, you have a lot of flexibility. If you decide when you get the pocket to this depth that, hey, that doesn't look deep enough, it's very easy to just pick up some more verticals, those bars between the stitches again, and you're ready to go. Um, you don't have to do a lot of thinking. I think that's one of the other benefits to using the three needles versus um, you can just use one circular needle. Um, and it's not like it's that much more complicated, but sometimes it can be, if you're at a fine gauge or a dark yarn, sometimes it can be a little bit more complicated to see exactly which um, column you've picked up between when you then go back to add more stitches to the vertical of the pocket. Okay, so let's start knitting the pocket. What we're gonna do is essentially start knitting here, or knit our row, and then we're gonna join the stitch to this stitch, okay? So I don't know if you've ever done like an applied edging on a shawl or what have you. Same, it's the same concept. So just again, with your needle in the, the same size that you worked your garment with. Now, if you, for example, have knit the pattern in the round and you're knitting this pocket flat, obviously, and you have a wildly different gauge, then you, you may need to be aware of that. Um, but typically just the same needle size as your sweater pocket. I mean, excuse me, as your sweater fabric. So here we go. Just get your tail out of the way. You don't need to really worry about it. And you're just gonna knit across, sorry, trying to figure out what you can see versus what I can see. You're gonna knit across 
the pocket bottom. And you can see why I would normally use um, circulars for the vertical sides of the pocket. The um, double points are, of course, rigid and a little bit clumsier to work with, but I was afraid if we just had three circular needles banging around that the sound would be distracting and it might be hard to tell which needle I'm working from. So when you get to the last stitch of the pocket, you're going to slip. Then you're going to take the first stitch that you picked up, slip it, and knit those two together. So just do an SSK with one stitch from the bottom of your pocket and one of the picked up stitches from the side. Okay. And then you're going to turn your work because we're knitting this flat. You want to slip this first stitch as if to purl and then in this case I'm going to do a stockinette po po um, pocket so I'm just going to purl across so you get to the end of the row you want to purl to the last stitch or work in pattern to the last stitch okay and then you're going to essentially um, purl two together, one of the stitches being from the bottom of the pocket or the working pocket and one from the pickup row. And just do that however works for you. Um, what's typically easiest for me is just to move that stitch onto that the pickup row and then purl those two together. But it might depend on whether you're a continental or European, whatever works for you, just purl those two together and then turn your work. And then you're going to slip your first row as if to purl. And then just knit across there till you get to that last stitch. And we'll do it again together. I guess I could do a close up for you. Okay, so a close up of how to join those two sides again if you need it. Um, I knit to the last stitch. Sorry, <laughs> I slip, I slip, and then I knit those two together. You can either use the working, you know, the working, the vertical needle, or if you want to, you can, you know, move them back to the working needle, or, you know, the circular needle, whatever works for you. Um, it does not matter because this is the needle that's giving you gauge, not the one you're knitting it off of. So. Okay, so one more time for the right side row. We are going to slip one as if to purl. Now, if you can't remember which way to slip them, it's fine. It'll just twist your stitch a little bit, but um, since they're slip stitches and they're on, they tend to kind of roll to the side, it's really not a huge deal. You can always change it how you do it the next row if you don't like the way it looks. Uh, but you do want to slip the first stitch of each row, no matter what. Unless, of course, it's the very first row. And then you knit to the last stitch. Slip one as if to knit, because you're doing a slip slip knit. So however you do that, you're going to do a slip slip knit with that next stitch on the vertical. Get them together. And then turn your work again. So again, when you're working the purl side, you want to slip one as if to purl. Purl across your pocket until you get to the last stitch. And it can get a little fiddly with the extra needles in the way. You learn to get used to it though. So what I typically do is slip that stitch as if to purl and then put it on this stitch that's holding my vertical pickups. And then I just purl those two together. Turn my work to do the next row. Okay, so then I think I'll just show you how to do the bind off row. Um, I typically keep this, for example, I didn't, you know, you would finish the pocket however the directions indicate. Um, I didn't cleverly cast on a good number for a ribbing or what have you. So I just did a garter. Um, and I did want to point out that usually I do still keep that border in stockinette. It just looks tidier than trying to switch it to another um, stitch. So 
that's just my personal preference, but you may find that you like something different. And then, so once I've done, gotten my vertical height that I like, I'm just gonna bind off however is indicated for the po the pocket as written. Um, I, I do still slip this stitch. I think it gives it a, a neater edge. Um, but then you're just gonna bind off in pattern, however, that is done until you get the last stitch. So we'll get there in a second. Okay, so then when I get to my last stitch, I'm going to do what I've been doing the whole time. I'm going to slip, slip, knit. Now, notice I have an extra stitch on here that I'm not going to be using. That's okay, I can just, I don't need it. And then bind off that stitch. So, break your yarn, pull it through, and there's your little pocket. Ta-da! Okay, so here is my little swatch. I just steam blocked it. Um, but you can see it's very tidy along the bottom. It looks like you've just picked up stitch. You know, it looks completely seamless. The slip stitches on the side only show up because this is a contrasting yarn. I have um, a, pat a sweater that I made, the GG cardigan, um, and this is a piece fleece, a worsted weight yarn. And you can see now this is, of course, a darker color, but you can see the, the pocket blends in, I mean, for a patch pocket, it blends in very nicely using this technique. And so if I really pull, you know, you can kind of see, like, and so I guess if you worked at a very loose gauge, you might have different, you would probably have different results. Um, but in a typical sweater gauge, like a traditional sweater gauge, I think with a tra traditional sweater fabric, I think you'll be very satisfied with the results of how it looks. Um, you might find that you want to reinforce the corners. Um, that's just always kind of a good idea. So of course in the cast on end or cast off end, the bind off end, you have a tail to do that with. Uh, but if you want to do it over here, you need to pick one up. But that's it. And there's your pocket. It's ready to go, which is very exciting without seaming. So that's applied pockets.